welcome to the No Flipping Excuses Show. Don't judge that This is the number one podcast for real estate investing, and each episode covers what you need to know to find and flip deals right now. Break free of the chains that are holding you back and join us on today's episode. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome to the No Flipping Excuses Show. I am so excited that you are here with us today. We've got my good friend, Miss Nina Clem, on the show with us. And if you guys don't know her, she's been a really good friend of mine for a very long time. And she just had something really exciting pop out. You may recognize her face. She is on the hit TV show, Flipping X's. Nina, how are you doing today? I'm doing awesome, Jason. Thank you so much for having me. And it's so good to see you. I haven't seen your face for a minute. I know. It's good to see you as well. You guys just wrapped up not too long ago with season one of the show and i've got to say it was a very good show very good show you guys were very entertaining and the deals that you guys were doing were great great deals as well so you guys aren't like the rest of the the tv shows out there to where they're they've got the inflated numbers because i did look at the numbers and you guys all the numbers that you said on the show we're 100% accurate, which is very rare in TV land nowadays. So I've got to give my hat off to you. Awesome show. Um, but for folks, though, that don't know that much about you, Nina, why don't you uh, share them in on uh, a little bit about what I already know, and uh, okay. we could let them know. All right, awesome. Well, um, I'm Nina Clem. I actually originally am from Boston, and I've been in Indiana now for uh, next month will be 11 years. And I started out as a realtor, so I've been a licensed realtor with the FC Tucker Company. And I I just love real estate. I love um, people. So I will say transitioning from the real estate part to the flipping side was kind of easy for me because back in Boston, I was a, a fashion stylist. So instead of designing clothes and people, I now moved it over and now I'm designing houses and I absolutely love it. But I think what kind of sets me apart from other realtors and other flipping shows is the fact that I actually actively still work with buyers and sellers. And I have a history of being able to um, be a top producer for Tucker. I have experience with new construction, I have experience with flipping, I have experience with construction. So when I'm working with a buyer that's interested in buying a house, I can walk through and be like, oh, well, we should have this checked out. And, you know, definitely with the inspection. It's just like the knowledge just keeps on growing. So I I was blessed to have an opportunity to do a show on Bravo, and um, here I am. So, no, that's great. And for folks that don't know, I met Nina when I was doing the short sale business, and her brother – actually uh, oh, introduced oh. to to <laughs> Nina. And at first I didn't know what her name was. He said Nina and <laughs> Christina. So I was like, I'm like, so what does she go by? And he said Nina. And I'm like, what is that? And so when, <laughs> when she came in to the Starbucks and she introduced herself as Nina, I'm like, oh, it must be an East Coast thing. And yeah. that's kind of how we, we first met. It's been 10 years ago. That, that we met and Nina's been always like a one of the top producing agents in her her business uh, for FC Tucker which is a big uh, it's a big brokerage you know that's really known in Indiana and mm-hmm. we've been doing things you know off and on ever since she actually sold a couple of the houses that we've done uh, she sold our personal residence and helped us find the new house uh, that we're in now And she's just been, you know, fabulous. She's been doing some really, really awesome things. Uh, But, Nina, for folks out there, you know, that are especially listening to the show right now, what do you think of the market that that we're kind of heading into right now? There's a lot of things that are, you know, looming as far as, hey, are we going to be in another recession? Um, Is the market slowing down? What are your thoughts on that? Well, 
I think that the market is slowing down a little bit, um, but it's also the time of the year. Now, I talk with a lot of investors who are, you know, we're not going to buy anything else until the end of the until the beginning of the year. Um, I, I have to say that if there's an opportunity to buy, it probably will be over the next few months because a lot of people want to wait until January. So I do think that there's an opportunity for investors that have it or find it hard to find houses because now there's a lot of investors that are just holding off until January. So I think that as of right now, depending on um, people's financial situation, if they're looking for any holds or if they're looking to do a flip, because if you think about it, if you get a flip that's you know going to take you a couple months to rehab, then it's perfect timing. Yeah, you might not be able to do the outside, but it is Indiana, so maybe you can. And I think that it can be ready for the for the spring market, which is always the hottest market. No, I, I agree with you. What do you, in your opinion, what do you think could be causing a potential recession down the road? Because it's not going to be like back in 08 when the market completely bottomed out and collapsed. And that was a primary role from, you know, the, the mortgages that were being written back then. We're not really seeing a whole lot of that nowadays. So what do you think? And I'm, I know you're not an, an economist, but you're a realtor and uh, you have, you know, a pulse on what's going on in the marketplace. So what what do you think would be a cause for, you know, a, a potential downturn in the market? Um, I think that it's kind of a loaded question, Jason. <laughs> I think that there's. I think that there's a lot of things that that could um, that could transpire. I think that you know I, I can't speak for a lot of the other markets because I'm not in it, so I can only kind of speak for what what's going on here. But there are a few areas that I feel like are selling at a high right now, and um, I feel like they are getting a little bit saturated. So my concern, I think, in some of the the areas that people are finding um, or, or gravitating towards, I just hope and pray that. That I'm wrong, but I, I don't want it to be where they are. They're buying at a high right now, and then, depending on what happens, you know, with the interest rates and what's going on over in Washington, is it going to be that their house is not going to be worth what it was when they purchased it in five years? Like, so that makes me a little bit nervous. And and typically, what I try to do is I try to find the flips that aren't where everybody is kind of going, because then right. that way. I don't run into that issue. <laughs> no, that's smart. That's smart. And what have you been seeing from like a, a standpoint of do you do you think foreclosure like pre foreclosures are on the rise or do you think we might be able to see another trend for individuals needing like help from a short sale standpoint? I'm, I'm curious because unemployment is you know at a really an all time low. Uh, especially right now as we're starting to get into the holiday season and, and whatnot. You don't really hear of a lot of companies uh, shutting down here anytime soon. So do we see that as a potential opportunity to, to do short sales again? Um, I think, well, you are the short, you are the short sale expert. I am not. And I do always prefer any short sales. You know you're the first person that I would call. Um, but... I do think that that with foreclosures and, and short sales, I have not seen a lot of them, especially right. over the past few years. What I do see, though, is a lot of people that are selling their houses as is, a lot of wholesale deals, and um, trying to get out from underneath the, the mortgage before it actually gets to that level. Um, so I think that right now, depending on what I, I, I did, and I have heard, and, and you could probably piggyback on this, um, that the lending side is getting a little bit more lax than what it used to. And if that happens, then hopefully it won't get too lax where we run into the same issue that we did in 2007, 89, 10, all that. Right. Right. So, so as a transition with the with the TV show and everything, are the houses that you guys are primarily flipping? If nobody has, you know, the listeners that are on here right now, if you haven't had a chance to to watch the show, uh, we'll talk about where it, it is now. Since the show has ended, uh, season one, there are some really great flips uh, that Nina and her partner, the ex Michael Lashure, uh, you know, were able to go over. 
and those are really great houses in my opinion you guys found them in the right areas you did them the right way you flipped them up and with your expertise of really you know decorating and staging the properties you guys were able to get top dollar for these properties so for investors that are listening to the show right now you know the houses that you were able to find where were you finding those were you finding those at auctions uh, I know you're a you know, uh, and you're crazy with marketing. You're awesome at it. So you, you've got to have some strategies out there that are working into, you know, a market that's really hot right now. Yeah. We, what's interesting kind of about the, the dynamic, we had seven houses that we did and all seven of them, or I wouldn't say all, like five of them we got from different places. And I, I think that what's, what's kind of cool about the show that people will see if they, if they tune in, um, they are like one of them, for instance, is in, um, is on Ruckle. And we, we did that with an investor. So we teamed up with an investor who had the house who didn't, he didn't know what he wanted to do with it. And so it was great for us to team up together and um, so now he bought it as a full package so he had uh, numerous houses that he bought with Ruckle as well so what he did was he was able just to kind of have us just do the Ruckle because the rest of the properties he actually ended up just using as rental properties and I think something like that is good if an investor has like a bigger package that they that they own maybe doing like keeping it but maybe there might be that one hidden gem in there that they actually flip instead of holding um, right. some of them Another one was, um, I actually, the house on Washington Street, which was episode number six, um, I actually bought that house um, I, about a, almost a year before the show uh, we started filming, and that one I bought it through the owner. I, I just, I, I saw the house online, oh, I'm sorry, it was not online, it was the guy owned it, but it was in an area that I wanted to go because I felt like it was actually getting hot. And actually the great thing about Washington is, um, I ended up contacting the the seller. It took me a little bit to find his information, but I ended up finding it, and I contacted him directly. And this is actually a great story because he oh, did. Let's talk about it. Okay, yeah, this is a great story. Okay, um, he called. I left him a message, and I didn't hear from him. So I thought, oh, maybe it was the wrong number, or whatever. So he ended up calling me back, and he said, um, uh, I. Why are you calling me pretty much? And I was like, well, I'm calling you on your Washington property and um, I would love to buy it. He said, do you want to know how many times I've heard that? If you want to buy it, no, I'm sick of these. This is what he said. I'm sick of people calling me and telling me they want to buy my house and I don't have anything in writing. So I responded to him <laughs> and I said, well, I'm sick of people telling me that I can buy a house and then they sell it to somebody else. And he said, Touche, I think I like you. <laughs> and so from that moment, he was like, I'm selling the house to you. And and we ended up, you know, flipping it and, and Michael ended up getting behind on it, which is a whole other story if you want to watch episode six. Um, full of drama. And but I will say the great thing about this particular flip was that we ended up selling it for four twenty five. Okay. Now the how there was a house two over that ended up selling for three eighty five. As soon as we sold ours, another house down the street sold. This is like all within two blocks, okay? Another house sold for, I think it was like 525. And then my the clients with not my house, the house two, two doors down, they refinanced it and their house is worth over like, it was like 475,000 a year later. And it goes to show you how when you find an area that isn't so, where not everybody is going, then if you can get in there, that, that that makes it like a great property, a great selling property on the buy side. Yeah, no, absolutely. And that, that actually was, I've seen all the episodes and that, that was an episode where, now if you guys are wondering how the show came about, Flipping X's, you have to watch it because uh, Michael and Nina, obviously they, they work together. They're the X's and they sometimes don't get along. And uh, on that particular episode, I remember you going up the stairs and there was something going on in the bathroom. And that kind of like, that kind of got you going a little bit. So what, what triggered you a lot in a lot of the episodes with you, uh, especially, you know, I could hop all over the place. Let's talk about that one. I've got a question for you on another one. 
okay. on one of the flips. So what what kind of triggered you to 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 kind of snap off on that one? Okay, uh, I I feel as though a lot of people um, don't take craftsmanship seriously, and I think that when you are selling a house that is a flip, there's a level of expectation that a buyer is going to walk in on. And if you don't have that expectation, then um, you're not going to get what you want for the house, clear and simple. So for me, I'm a perfectionist. And if I'm paying somebody to do a job, I expect them to do it the way that I want it to be done. I don't expect them to cut corners. I don't expect them to miss a whole side of it that is not painted or um, a crappy tile job or it just, it infuriates me because I feel like people are lazy. I'm not lazy. I don't expect people that I pay to be lazy. So I had it with Michael. <laughs> I was just had it up to here with him not finding those those things and and I think that that for me I always want to walk the properties before I list it and I, I there's a level of expectation and if you don't have it then yeah I kind of I kind of go from zero to 100 real quick I'm from Boston remember she's from Boston everything's from Boston. going all nuts so and crazy going all nuts it's going nuts I, I, I don't understand <laughs> Oh my goodness. There was a lot of a lot of interesting things on the show that, you know, kept not just me, but a lot of people watching the show. And I do work obviously with with Jay and we're talking episode 1 here. This this is what got me like, "Oh man, this is oh, this is going to be good." With Jay. <laughs> I'm like, "This is going to be a good show." I'm like I'm like, "This is going to be really good." So let's talk about episode one there to where I think Michael found out that Jay, I guess, had voices talking to him about <laughs> what the house needed to have done to it. And I even asked him, I'm like, Jay, what do you mean the house was talking to you, man? The, the house told you to take that down, the, the, the wall? <laughs> so I remember seeing your reaction to this, but why don't you walk us through? You walk through the front door. What's going on in, in your head? I was confused. I, I was like, you know, it, it kind of, it, it, I still, I, it's still hard for me to talk about. Okay? <laughs> oh no. You have an expectation. Okay. So, you know, I, I had this design plan in my head and there's an expectation that's set. So when I walked in the house, I, I was so confused. I was like, what, what, what? What? Like, wait, 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 where's my wall? Like, where, where <laughs> is my wall? And I, I, I still to this day, actually, I bumped into Jay at Lowe's the other day, and I was like, really, Jay? Really? <laughs> so, yeah, I, I was floored. And then that was, that really kind of, it messed me up for a minute because my design was created on walking in and having a wall and then walking around and there was a certain thing that I wanted to do in the when you walked into the entryway that, that everything was jacked up so I had to figure out what I was going to do so yeah. I was I was a happy camper but you know what it, it turned out actually to be a, a really good flip for you guys you guys didn't you guys clear a six figure profit on that deal mm-hmm yeah, I remember because I, I was like, I know Nina's not going to do this show and, you know, do it like the rest of these, you know, shows out there. So I was like, you know, I'm going to check the numbers. I'm going to make sure my girl ain't doing this wrong. And I'm like, yep, she really did clear six figures on this deal. And I was like, good. I'm glad she's doing this the right way. And, you know, the rest of the houses, I know there were a couple that I think didn't, uh, you know, get sold. Um, and that's obviously common, right? Do you remember that one? No. So yeah, you know, I, I think I messaged you on Facebook and I was wanting to find out and we don't have to talk about this Joey character, but you guys dumped a ton of money into this deal. And maybe it is yeah. a good thing that we talk about it, right? Because we could say, Hey, you got to watch out with who you do business with. But what, what happened on that? Did that thing ever end up doing anything? Nope. It's still sitting there. And um, I never saw a penny. 
And I will tell you lesson learned because uh, the one thing that for, for your viewers, I think is important to know, um, everybody sounds good. You know, everybody talks a good game. Um, the proof is in what they do. And I think for me, the biggest challenge that, that I have had to overcome in my 10 years in real estate and that Michael learned a very, very valuable lesson with is you can't necessarily trust your friends. You have to have everything in writing, everything laid out, and you can't just do it on a whim because really that bit us in the ass. And, and you know, I, I never got so, yeah, the poor, the Woodruff is great. And then there goes, you know, $25,000 out the window, you know, of a bad deal. But at the end of the day, that's the one thing I like about the, the show is the fact that it's real. Like that was a real scenario. That is a real scenario that, that, that I still did not get paid on. And it goes to show you that, that you, you really, real estate is a gamble. You're going to win some and you're going to lose some. You can't always plan on winning because if you, if you think that way, then you're in the wrong business. Yeah, no, absolutely. And when I saw that, I was like, wow, I, I, I was just, completely floored because that could have been a really good flip opportunity oh for folks. Oh my God, yes. Yes, it could have been. Even though I would have designed it different, but I still think it could have been, it, it could have been, a. It, it really could have been. And it's a so shame. You talk, so you talk about having things in writing. What would you recommend or encourage? I know you're not an attorney. What would you recommend in that case? What would you have done differently to, instead of walking in the way you guys walked in, and trusting him because you guys did have him on an, uh, an earlier episode and things kind of went okay. Um, what would you, what would you have done differently with this deal? Um, I would have had my, I always recommend, you know, have a real estate attorney look over the paperwork. You know, I, I have a fabulous one now that I, after, after that episode, I won't do anything without his, blessing. If he doesn't bless it, I'm not doing it. Or, and, and I say that because I want to make sure that the paperwork is correct because we should have had money up front and we didn't. And I think that if we would have laid out the terms of, okay, we're going to, we'll do this, but we want, you know, $25,000 up front. And then every four weeks or every two weeks, however, depending on the material, we get X amount of dollars and we did not do that. So I think that that, that was our, uh, our downfall. You live and you learn. It was a mistake that we made and I won't ever make it again. And that is one thing. It's kind of like, you know, a, a, a college class, you know, like I, I excelled in, in that and now I won't ever do it again. <laughs> so yeah, that, you know, that, that's, it just goes to show that, you know, you got to have your, your eyes dotted and your T's crossed and uh, you really do have to have an attorney in this business to re be reviewing everything. Um, I Trust me, I've, <laughs> I've had some mistakes in, in my time too. And what's interesting is in Indiana, you don't, like every state is different, but um, we don't have attorneys that negotiate our contracts. We only have attorneys that work for the title company that make sure that the titles, that the title's not, the title's clear. Um, so I think that when you're doing wholesale deals or when you're doing like off the market stuff, I do think that it is wise for you not just to trust the attorney at the title company, but get your own attorney just to double check everything because this is, that's where problems happen. Yeah, no, absolutely. I 100% agree with you on that. And, you know, with you also being a, a realtor, which a lot of people got to see that too. And that, that home on season one that you got done so quick, a lot of people don't realize that, you know, you are a really good expert at marketing and you have a really great team behind you. Um, why don't we talk about that one before we hop into what you're doing now? Um, how, how did that house get sold so quickly? Because it's obviously, that's a, that's a big home. Um, and some folks are probably wondering, you know, how, how would you get rid of a, a home that quickly? Well, the, the blessing of that one is that I designed it with Diane. So oh, cool. we look, yes. So when she purchased it from me, I knew that there was a chance that 
maybe her husband wouldn't be with the Colts anymore. And so we went into it with a mindset, not necessarily of what she loved, but what is sellable and what is something that God forbid if something happened and she needed to unload it in a year or two, can she do that? And that was the questions that when we started from scratch with the house, with the layout, with the floor plan, with the design, like, is this a sellable house? And that's what I kept on reiterating to her. So when it got time to, oh my gosh, she hasn't even like hung a picture yet because they they had to sell it before she even really got settled into the house. It was, okay, now we need to stage it because she still was not all the way set settled in. So we got it staged, we got it, um, and we just tried to do a, I did a broker's open, like an open house, and invited everybody that I knew that sold in that area. And um, and I knew it was a gorgeous house because I, 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 from the ground up is what we did. And I think a lot of people forget um, that when they're building a house, you know, a lot of builders are like, oh, just work with my design team, you don't need a realtor or blah, blah, blah. But you know what, I disagree with it because I feel like this is a perfect scenario of why a realtor like me that does design, that does flipping, I understand construction and it, it worked out in her benefit because she ended up prof making money off the house less than a year later. No, that's great, that's awesome. And you know, for for folks that are wondering what, what you're doing now, I'm sure it probably hasn't changed too much since the show, you're still doing real estate, um, yes. you know, we got, get to see, you know, you went and visited your kids, uh, in Pittsburgh and they're uh, doing some really cool things. I can't believe how tall, uh, your oldest is. Gosh, he's probably taller than me and I'm six two. So, uh, well, he's six four, so now, yes, he is taller than you. <laughs> he's taller than me. And that, that's just yeah. crazy. So he's, we're seeing uh, all the cool things that you're, you're doing online. And for folks that don't know, she's probably one of the hardest workers that I know in the game. Um, always work, like always, 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 always working. And uh, it's just making uh, making things happen for herself, for her family, um, and it's just awesome stuff. So what is going on with Nina right now after the show has wrapped? What, what have you got yourself into? It looks like you're in one of your rehabs right now. I am. <laughs> this is this actually house is probably my favorite I have ever done and I'm excited about this one um, so after the show I, I kind of needed a little bit of a break from Michael okay so you know he took a little bit <laughs> so another breakup huh <laughs> Little, just a break, you know, if, if when we start filming season two, you know, we'll go back, but right now I just need a little air to breathe, okay, so, um, so, but I'm still flipping, and um, actually Mike Suggs, who is in episode two, which is Ruckle, um, he and I have been teaming up because he, Ruckle went so well that he loved my design, he loved how quickly we sold it, and he was like, I would love you to do my flip, so what I've started to do was be a consultant with some flippers. So um, I have been just going in and been telling them, you know, what they should do from a design perspective, how to sell the house, um, what I feel like this area is looking for, because every area is different, but because I sell all over the place, I'm, I'm pretty good at, at, at what needs what, or what area needs what, different things for the house house so to speak I guess um, and so that's been that's been going phenomenal and um, I really enjoyed it and I actually picked up um, some design clients and it was funny on one of the episodes I said that you know I, I want to get back to flipping and I don't want to do any design and then I kept on getting calls for design and I was like okay so maybe I will and so I've been doing some consulting with some designs and I have a um, a beautiful house over on the east side of Car um, the west side of Carmel that is over 12,000 square feet that I'm in the process of, of, of doing over with the with the owner and I'm very excited about that. And then my real estate business, you know, it, it is a little bit slow um, from a standpoint of buyers and sellers at the moment. I have a couple listings that I'm getting ready to stage because I always stage my listings before I list them um, that are coming up, but um, I'm still accepting clients, buyers, sellers, investors, 
whatever. And I have a fabulous team. Um, I still have Caitlin and Michelle, and I hired two more people, um, one that's licensed, and then a marketing PR person to help me with um, all my social media because, you know, I'm not techie. So <laughs> she's fabulous. And, um, and it's just been busy and great. That's awesome. That's awesome. That is great. I'm so proud of you. You're doing such amazing things uh, here in the community. And that's really what it's about is doing really great stuff uh, in the community. And one big thing, kudos to you uh, when you had the the premiere, you raised some money uh, for, a, for a, uh, a really great cause. And, yes. you know, I'm so proud of you for doing stuff like that. You're, you're really doing some stuff to help empower the community and uh, that that's just awesome stuff. Now, for folks that want to find out, you know, about season one, how they could uh, go and watch it, what are some ways to where they can go and and check that out? Well, they can always go to Bravo, BravoTV.com, and um, we are uh, they are we are being shown now on Amazon Prime. We're being shown on Hulu. We're being shown on um, NBC.com. And so they can they can check any of those um, websites and they can watch all seven episodes. That's awesome. That is great. Go check those out. Flipping X's on Amazon Prime, Hulu, Bravo. You can check it out on NBC as well. I'm telling you right now, you, you could get some amazing tips from just watching the show. Uh, and it's also really fun to watch because <laughs> you never know when Nina and Michael are going to butt heads. Uh, so it's it's really, really fun. And I will say, if, if people also want to see some of the before and the afters, um, they can go to my Instagram as well because my Instagram, I've really been focusing a lot on the before and the afters and the staging and how staging really helps sell a house. So they can go in. I, my Instagram is I am no wait what is my Instagram okay sorry my Instagram is the real Nina Clem um, is the real Nina Clem okay we just changed it because if I had to do another underscore I was gonna like slip my wrist I know okay? I was gonna say there was a lot of freaking underscores I'm like it's I <laughs> underscore am <laughs> so the so real Nina got, Clem is so much better I, I got I got rid of that so it's what is it? The real Nina Clem. That's what it is. So, <laughs> and if Nina Clem wasn't out there, then I would use that. But somebody took it. Now, how could there be another me? There's only there's only room for one because I'm a little, you know. I know there there's only room for one Nina Clem in the world. Yes. <laughs> so yes. let's say investors or other other folks want to get in touch with you, maybe for doing design stuff or just reaching out and wanting to get in contact with you, is there a website or something that they could uh, check out? Yep, they could go to ninaclem.com or they could just email me at nina at ninaclem.com and um, email is, is great because I, between my assistant and I, we're always following up on the email, so that's probably the best way of communication because I turn my phone off when I'm with clients, so I don't usually answer it while I'm... No, that's cool. And I've I've been following. We're we're uh, following you on Instagram, and the before and after stuff is really really cool. So you guys, go check that out. So the real Nina Clem on Instagram, go follow her. Uh, make sure you check out the season one, which is right now on Hulu, Amazon Prime. You can check it out on Bravo. You can check it out on NBC. Definitely recommend it. It was such a great season uh, to watch. And being from my hometown and stuff, not my hometown, but the town I live in, yeah. um, it's really cool knowing that those areas and knowing the stuff that you guys are able to do, some really awesome stuff there. And just watching the show, you could get some amazing design tips because Nina is truly uh, a remarkable expert in that field. And she does some really cool stuff for getting houses sold lightning fast. But Nina, any parting words for our listeners? Jason rocks. So I'm glad that y'all tune into him because he's one of my favorites. Um, I've learned a lot from him and hopefully one of these days, Jason, you and I could do something together, maybe a seminar together. You can talk Absolutely. about design. I can talk to investors about design. So let, let's try to, let's try to do something. For sure. For sure. Awesome. Well, thank you, Nina, for being on the show. For those of you that need us, if uh, you'd like to reach out, it's support at jasonlucchese.com. That's S-U-P-P-O-R-T at J-A-S-O-N. 
L-U-C-C-H-E-S-I.com. If you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you hit that subscribe button, get the notifications so you get first of when we are uploading new videos just like this. Make sure you hit that smash that like button and make sure you leave us a comment. And if you are on iTunes, Nina did a really great job on this episode. So give us the five stars that we deserve. If you give us the four stars, let us know what we did to get four stars. <laughs> but other than that, thank you so much for being here. Have a great day. Take care. Bye now. Thank you.